Hello, welcome to Levant TV Headlines. The UN humanitarian chief says 12.2 million Syrians need assistance because of increasing violence and deteriorating conditions in the country, up from 10.8 million in July. Egypt has reopened the Rafah border crossing with Gaza for the first time since its closure in late October after a bombing in the Sinai Peninsula. And Egypt's President Abdel Fattah Sisi is due to hold talks with French counterpart François Hollande, likely to focus on the chaos in Libya as well as bilateral economic cooperation. The runoff battle in Tunisia's first free presidential election is underway after secular forerunners Beji Kaid Sipsi and incumbent Munsef Marzouki finished top in the first round. And finally, armed tribesmen have blown up Yemen's main oil pipeline, halting the flow to the export terminal on the Red Sea coast. Now let's have a look at top headlines in today's newspapers in the Middle East. Starting from Beirut, the Daily Star leads reporting that the legendary Lebanese singer and actress Sabah has died aged 87 at Beirut's Comfort Hotel in Babda, where she had been living. The paper also reports that heavy rains battered Lebanon for a second consecutive day, causing major traffic snarls and disrupting port activities in the south. The Egypt Independent leads reporting that Egyptian telecommunication uh, Nagib Sawiris says that the Wall Street Journal deliberately misquoted his views on the Egyptian government's security strategy during a recent interview. The paper also reports that the Environment Ministry is looking to boost river transport up to 25% by establishing infrastructure and limiting negative and environmental impacts of transferring merchandise via the Nile. From the UAE, the Khalish Times reports that Gulf Labour ministers have agreed on minimum terms in the contracts of domestic staff to improve the working conditions of over 2.4 million foreign maids. The paper also reports that an Emirati has been sentenced to three years in jail, fined 500,000 dirhams and had his Twitter account closed for having links with a secret organization, Al Islah Group, which is affiliated to the Muslim Brotherhood in the UAE. And now let's have a look at papers here in London. The Guardian Least Middle East News reporting that a new report by Dignity, the Danish Institute Against Torture, says widespread and gross human rights violations in Libya, including disappearances, arrests, torture and death, have left nearly a third of the population suffering from mental health problems amid continuing violence and lawlessness. And the Independent East Middle East News reporting that Israel's President Reuven Rivlin has withdrawn an invitation for Amir bin Ayoun to perform at the presidential residence after he released a new song that depicts Israel's Arab citizens as, quote, scum and murderers. The Telegraph reports that a war of words has erupted between Israel and its closest ally, the United States, after a leading right-wing politician told Washington to mind its own business over a highly contentious bill to declare the country a Jewish state while stripping Arabs of national rights. The rebuff was delivered by Naftali Bennett, the, econo the economy minister and leader of the Nationalist Jewish Home Party, after the US State Department suggested the bill undermined Israel's democratic credentials. Now let's have a look at top Middle East headlines in international papers. China's Global Times, the East Middle East News, reporting that delegates including political leaders from more than 50 Muslim countries voiced their main concern over the expansion of Islamic State militant group in the Middle East while gathering at a meeting in the Turkish city of Istanbul at the 30th session of Standing Committee and Economic uh, and Commercial Cooperation of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. And finally, Germany's Deutsche Welle reports that CN Foreign Minister Walid Muallim is to visit Russia and meet his counterpart Sergei Lavrov to discuss resumption of the political dialogue on conflict settlement in Syria. And for more updates, please visit levant.tv. Thanks for watching. Be sure to join us again tomorrow and bye for now.